Hi everyone, it's your girl, Lady Hates Crown Crates Azura. Hey, it's your boy, uh... Azura. And I'm back with another video because I guess I've got a reoccurring series of videos around Crown Crates now. If you haven't seen my last two videos, I talked about the predatory practices of crates and lack of rewards in the first video, and in my second video, I did some calculations and figured out some rough statistics around drop rates and how much money raiding apex mounts really cost. If you haven't seen these videos yet, I will link them below. In my previous videos, I also discussed endeavors a bit and alluded to making an entire video dedicated to taking a closer look, as people requested it in the comments as well. So, you might be thinking, wow Azura, this is old news, you're like two years late to talking about this, and to that I say... Stop talking, be quiet for several days. I wanted to take a closer look at endeavors themselves and figure out how long it takes to buy mounts, look at some popular misconceptions and conspiracies, and also look at legislation in different countries around loot crates in general. That's the boring part for most of you, so that's why I'm saving it for last. Let's just get into it. So, what is the Endeavor system? Unless you're brand new to the game, or are unfortunately coming back from a long hiatus, the Endeavor system was introduced with the Blackwood update in June 2021. The system basically lets you earn in-game currency called Seals of Endeavor, so you can buy items from the Crown Crates without having to spend real money or gamble. There are various theories as to why Zenimax implemented this system, but it's most commonly accepted that this is so ESO complies to Microsoft's policy around loot crates in their games. Microsoft acquired Zenimax back in September 2020, however it took almost a year for them to implement the Endeavor system in-game. More on these policies later. The premise of earning Endeavors is that you can complete some menial or basic tasks every day and week to earn Endeavor seals. You can complete three tasks, tasks a day and one task a week, and the amount of seals change day to day and week to week. Typically, most of these tasks can be done passively by playing the game and don't require much effort. But what is the general consensus around the Endeavor system? There's always been a lot of mixed opinions, and people were generally pretty positive about it when it came out. Almost two years on, however, I wanted to see if people's opinions changed. I pulled Twitter and my YouTube subscribers and asked them if they felt the system was fair and balanced. On Twitter, the results were somewhat mixed, with over one-third saying that they thought it was fair and two-thirds saying it's not. Whereas on YouTube, only 20% of people thought it was fair and about 80% said it's not. It's safe to conclude at this point that a majority of people are not happy with the system. So why is that? I've got a couple theories backed up by comments I've read on Twitter and on YouTube. Some people, including myself, feel like it takes a very long time to earn them and it's an incredibly slow grind. Others have suggested that Zenimax has made it as difficult as possible for people to earn enough to buy what they want, so players just cave in and decide to buy crates instead. It's impossible to get enough endeavors during a crate cycle, which lasts about three months, to be able to buy a Radiant Apex mount. Unless you've been saving up, you're basically SOL. Some people suggest this is intentionally predatory on Zenimax's end and are trying to give players FOMO so they buy crates instead. Some players also may not even end up spending their endeavors because they're saving them up for a mount that was available in the past and they're hoping for it to return. Or possibly they're too afraid to spend their endeavors in case something comes out in the future that they want. And of course, some people say this is they probably added the system to comply to gambling laws in various countries. Again, more on this later. No matter what your opinion is, it's an undeniable fact that it takes players months to be able to afford a mount with endeavors. I want to look at realistically how long you would need to play the game for to earn enough. I already hypothetically calculated this in my last video and I actually made a mistake probably because I'm stupid, which a kind viewer pointed out to me in the comments and I made an amendment. However, this time instead of pulling a hypothetical number out of my ass, based on a few previous weeks of endeavors, I'm armed with some real data this time. I'd like to give a very special shout out to Benevolent Bodhi, whose website was absolutely crucial to making this video. I'm just going to call them Benevolent for now because it's a bit of a mouthful. 
They've collected the data for every single endeavor since the day it launched, and they've got some cool graphs and statistics on their website. More on these shortly. Anyways, you guys are just here to find out how long it's going to take you to get that rating apex so you can click off the video already. I get it. I'm impatient too. Right, so the median amount of endeavors you could have earned from launch on June 2021 to around today in April 2023 is 505 endeavors a week total. This would be completing all three daily tasks every day and one weekly task every week. This means it would take you about 34.4 weeks or over eight months of non-stop endeavors to be able to afford a rating apex. That's wild. Obviously, give or take a little for those weeks with, with discrepancies, but eight months is still probably pretty accurate. However, if you're like me and incredibly lazy and don't get a lot of tasks done, mostly because I forget, it would take even longer. And if you're someone who doesn't play every day, it could easily take you over a year. Now, I can hear some of you already saying, but the point of endeavors is that they're supposed to be a slow grind. And yeah, they are, but does it really need to be that slow of a grind? I mean, come on. Speaking of grinds, I was grinding out the data on Endeavor drop rates over the past 54 weeks. Yes, I know there's 52 in a year. So I can get to the bottom of some of the conspiracies people share. I could get really into the statistics here, but since this video is already going to be long enough, I'll try my best to summarize. Benevolent has collected all the data on Endeavor Seals. They actually have a good analysis of the amount you could earn in the first year from June 2021 to 2022. This is great because it means they did half my job for me, basically. But since this year isn't over yet, I decided to collate my own data from the very end of March 2022 to the beginning of April 2023, but rewinding to 2021. It looks like at the start of Blackwood, the rewards were all over the place. They seem to have become more consistent and settled into a pattern after a few months and have stayed consistent since then. There's a misconception that they've slowly been lowering the amount of endeavors we get over time, and I believe this is due to the rewards being so sporadic at launch. To an extent, yes, we are now getting less, but it stayed around the same average for over a year. It's also worth noting that on Benevolent's graphs from 2021 to 2022, the amount of weekly endeavors has increased, whereas the amount of daily endeavors offered every day has decreased since launch, but they've stayed incredibly consistent in being 10 to 15 seals per task. Overall, there seems to be an incredibly minimal decline in how many we've earned since launch. The data I collected myself from March 2022 to April 2023 shows that the amount of rewards is smooth and level as you can see on my graph. That big spike you can see early on is an outlier, and yes, this is when ZeniMax compensated us for server issues with extra endeavors. So in short, yeah, they have lowered the amount of endeavors since launch, but no, it does not seem to be gradually decreasing still. It's a very consistent amount now. Some other cute little fun facts and statistics worth noting is, as of writing this in early April, the total amount of endeavors you could earn is 48,975. By the time you're watching this, it will be more, and I'm so slow with making videos sometimes, it's hard to get these things accurate. Anyways, this means that if you got every single seal since launch, you could have bought about three Radiant Apex mounts. Come to your own conclusions with that information. Do you think it's fair that someone could only afford to get three mounts in almost two years? Another fun fact is that the official post announcing endeavors from ZeniMax stated that the amount of tasks able to be completed in, in a day and week would change. Clearly, they didn't follow through with that. Can you imagine how nice it would be if we could do more than one weekly task to earn more seals? Another thing worth noting that I found a little curious when doing some research for my last video is that the Radiant Apex mounts are different prices if bought with gems, but they're the same price with Seals of Endeavors. I'm not sure if this is intentional or an oversight, but I guess it's good that you don't have to save up more Seals for different mounts. So let's look at the legal side of things now. I ain't no lawyer, but this sort of stuff is interesting to me. However, it was a little hard to find the right information online. So, let's start with Microsoft's policy on loot crates in their games. 
Links to all sources will be found in the description, by the way. The statement starts with talking about how at Microsoft they want to make their games fun, earn players trust, blah 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 blah. What really stood out to me was a couple sentences in the second paragraph saying, Loot boxes have always been the focus of debate because they contain an element of chance. We know that many of our customers like the element of chance in their gameplay, and we want to deliver the best value to gamers who choose to buy loot boxes. When I read this, I was like, like, what? What? Like, what planet are these guys on? Like, what? What is this? What is this? Why does this exist? From what I've heard from a lot of people I know, and from the countless comments on my last videos, people hate RNG. Like, I don't think anyone in the history of the world has, has, has ever said, Boy, I sure do love gambling for fake items with real money in my video games. Like, what? Then, they go over their terms about how you're always guaranteed an item of equal or more value, which in this case is pretty true because you're always guaranteed a superior reward or higher in the crates. Then they say all items must be earnable in-game, which of course is via the Endeavor system. As far as I'm aware, this is true, you can earn everything with Endeavors, except for that Shade Polymorph. Hmm. They also talk about content probability, probability disclosures, which we went over in my last two videos on this, so I won't go into detail, but I will say they don't disclose the probability of getting items in the same tier. If you want to know the details, go watch my last video. The next point is purchase disclosure. This one's not that obvious when it comes to ESO as the ESRB rating does not include in-game purchases or gambling, but it does say on the Steam store in-game purchases when you go to buy it. The last point they state is that they won't use your information against you to disadvantage you and that the only info they'll use is to increase the probability of getting an item you don't have. This is also true for the crates because Zenimax has stated that there is a system in place to ensure that you have a higher chance of getting the items you don't have. So overall, it seems like Zenimax are sticking to the rules that Microsoft has laid out, which is good. On the subject of gambling laws and crate bans in various countries, as you probably already know, there are a few countries that have banned the sale of crates. You cannot buy crates in the Netherlands or Belgium, and China has restrictions around them. China's legislation states that the odds of rewards must be shown, players must be given more favorable odds based on how many loot boxes they buy, and there must be a cap on the amount of crates players can buy every day. Anyone under the age of 8 cannot buy them, and if you're under 18, you're only permitted to have a spending limit on loot boxes of 30 to 60 US dollars a month. A few other countries around the world are looking to introduce legislation around loot crates in video games, such as the UK, Australia, Finland, and various states in the US. This list is probably much larger than that, but this is the only info I could find online. Oh, and in Germany, games with loot crates must be labeled as cost traps on the rating, which I found a little funny. A few other countries, including my own, which is New Zealand, have determined that loot crates are not gambling. Some of these countries do not recognize that as gambling because you're not using money to gain something of equal value. So basically, since you aren't actually winning real currency or something of real life value, they cannot define loot crates as gambling. In my research, I also found an interesting forum post about legislation around loot crates and endeavors. Unfortunately, the user did not share their country of residence, and I could not find anything on Google, in English at least, so I'm assuming they're in Europe somewhere. They state that even with the Endeavor system, Zenimax is still breaching their local laws. They said, Items cost a lot more than what can actually be acquired within the lifetime of, of availability of the product, and the fact that a limitation applies to the item encourages gambling and thus promotes the problem. Since you cannot earn enough seals to buy the more expensive items from the crates in the length, length of time they're available, Zenimax is breaching the laws in this country. The forum user said that they did report them to the proper authorities, but we can assume not much has happened since then. If you're passionate about getting crown crates or loot boxes in general banned from your country, I would suggest doing some research into your own country's legislation. Find out if there's somewhere you could report it to or write to a local politician. I know it sounds lame as fuck, but the more countries that look at banning loot boxes, the more likely Zenimax will have to look at changing the crates. 
And you can always make a post on the forums, send Zenimax feedback, or repost this video to other places if you like what I've talked about. If you made it this far, thanks. I know it may have been hard to sit through all that legal talk. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are on the Endeavor system, and if you personally have saved up enough to get anything, or if you're still holding on to yours. Also, it would be interesting to hear if any of you know anything about laws being introduced in your country around loot boxes, or if you even think they should be illegal in the first place. I personally think that they should be made illegal and we can just buy the items outright. I'm not against the crown store in general, I'm just against the poor practices of virtual gambling. As always, thank you for watching, leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and share if you want to spread the word. Have a good one.